Hi, this is Justine Lombardi at the Northeast Regional Information Center, and this is Getting Started with Blended Learning. Blended Learning is a circular design process. During the planning phase, we need to ask ourselves questions like, who are my students? What do I want my students to be able to do? What tech tools will help my students' learning? How will my students demonstrate mastery? During the development phase, we work on actually creating our lessons, the projects our students will be creating, and instructions for our students. Implementation, this is the best part, where we get our students working, thinking, and growing. Reviewing is a key aspect of blended learning. After we implement a lesson, unit, or project, we want to make sure that our students met their learning goals and that the learning was effective. We do this with chatting with our students, formative and summative assessment, reviewing their work, or giving short quizzes or tickets out the door. After review, we go into the improving phase. What could we do better in the next lesson, unit, or project? And then we circle back to planning, utilize what we learned from our student experiences to develop new content. Before we move on to tips on how to get started with blended learning, I'd just like to take a moment to review the basics. Remember, blended learning is about bringing the best of you, your pedagogy, content knowledge together with the best of technology. It's not about tech for tech's sake. In blended learning, we want to give students choice. In blended learning, we want to look for mastery, giving students the opportunity to do their very best. Blended learning is meant to be transformative, utilize the technology in new ways to do things we couldn't do before. And finally, blended learning is data informed. Remember, as we look at these tips, that a really crucial aspect for having good blended design is following the principles of backwards design. So we always wanna start with, what are my goals? What learning standards do I want my students to meet? What do I want my students to be able to do? I'll list my tips for getting started here, and then I'll go into a little more detail on each one. First, start small. Second, use technology to peak interest. Third, digitize what you have already. And fourth, try new techniques. Tips for getting started with blended learning. Start small. Even a little seed doesn't turn into a plant overnight. We need to build as we go, and it's easy to get overwhelmed with all these big ideas. So just starting with a small piece is the best way to go. You may remember the example of the teacher who had students check in with her every day, but for the most part, they were all working at different points within the curriculum. And this is great, but it takes a while to build up with this. So what you want to think about this is first you want to lay down your foundation and then build your house one brick at a time. Peak interest. One of the principles of universal design for learning, which I hope to have a complete module on in the future, is multiple means of engagement. Finding multiple ways to keep students interested and engaged. Technology and blended learning is a great way to achieve that. So for example, when I taught social studies, I could use Google Expeditions, the VR version, to get students excited about a geography project before we started. Digitize. One great way to get started with blended learning is just to start moving what you have to a learning management system like Schoology or Google Classroom so that students can access it anywhere, any place. In the next module, we'll go into more detail about how to digitize existing content and to create digital content for your blended courses. Don't be afraid to try something new. One of the ways that we can model a growth mindset for our students, which we know from the Framework for Universal Design on Learning is very important for improving learning outcomes, is being experimental ourselves. Try a new tactic, try a new tool. If it doesn't work, try something else later. But don't be afraid to try new things. Finally, evaluate and adapt. After you've blended a lesson, unit, or project, make sure that it's serving your students by checking in with them to see if they've met their learning goals and ask them how they feel about the new learning opportunities in your classroom. Go back and make changes if you need to. This has been Getting Started with Blended Learning. This is Justine Lombardi, the e-learning team at the NERIC. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you for listening.